goal! Yes, 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 yes! That was a goal! Striker! Eat that! And another! Bing bang, stick it in! Thank you and good night! What? That was liquid football! Uh, shit! Did you see that? Hello everybody! It's your old friends mm-hmm. at Monday Madness and welcome to a very special edition of the Lick That Was Liquid Football podcast live from the bunker. Woo! Yeah. But, so, so two one person was on cue, the other one was not. Um so <laughs> I, I like, in my defense I was drinking. Okay, that's fine, I'll accept that. Um yeah, but yeah, don't don't yeah. let it happen again, all right? Or else like you know, come on. It's a serious <laughs> you operation we're here. Drinking? Do you not realise what No the no 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 not that. Not that. I'm just saying like drink, but also woo at the same time. Like Alright then, cool. I mean, what, you, you, didn't say? Brief, you didn't you, you didn't brief me on what the bunker is. I didn't know how to react. Is it a bad bunker? Is it a good bunker? Is it a happy bunker? Is it a it's, bad bunker? It's whatever know. bunker you want, man. It's it's whatever is in your mind. It's like Animal Crossing. Like it just has to be. It's whatever it's in your head. You know. Aren't all bunkers in, aren't all bunkers inherently bad? Yeah, I I, I, I thought I, I went straight to World War Two. I don't know why. I was <laughs> like, if you're in a bunker, like you're not. You, people don't go to bunkers because their life's going really well. True. <laughs> <laughs> but, life, but life isn't going well at the moment. So we're in the moment. Well, done, well done, Jonathan. Well done, Jonathan. We got around. Fantastic, lads. I love that we reverted to fucking Hitler two minutes into the podcast. That's a fantastic start. So, um, new record. New record. New record, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, this is a special presentation, as I mentioned. Uh, with me in the room, in giant quotation marks, is Neil, as ever. <laughs> Now you'll notice that the other person on the call um, sounds very much not like Burt Ba. Um, in fact, either that or her um, balls have dropped in that time. No, in fact, we have <laughs> we're joined by a special guest from the Hallway Wrestling Podcast and other miscellaneous things he gets he gets people dragged into. Uh, Rian, the man that genetics forgot, I believe, is your tagline because you're <laughs> you're some sort of freak of nature. Don't you dare tr- say that as if you uh, you don't know you 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 have so many names for me that include that, in- that include you don't that know every- you have you you have Jericho's five hundred lists of holes but it's all slags for my crippledness. <laughs> to be fair, it is mostly hello, about your neck. So hello hello everybody. Yeah, my my I made my uh, username on the switch today. Um, Gooseneck. So we're all good. excellent, excellent. Staying on brand. I like it. Um, you'll be able to make a uh, brand of turtlenecks in the future that uh, go to infinity. So that's that's what, <laughs> yeah. that's what to look forward to. So um, as I said, we're this isn't the bog standard liquid football show because I don't know if you've noticed, but football has stopped. And uh, if Man United fans had their way, it would never happen again because that would stop Liverpool winning the title. Um, which brings it us immediately. Also stop their team playing football. Yeah, that's true. Well, to be fair, their their team hasn't played football since 2010, so don't worry about it. Well, in all fairness, uh, West Ham, they, they've come out and said that they, <laughs> they want the league, the, the league stopped as well. And I was like, yeah, that's because you're outside the relegation zone on goal difference. <laughs> on goal difference, yeah. Managed yeah. by David Moyes. And the most notable thing that happened to your season was Mikel Antonio crashing his fucking car dressed as a snowman. I can see why you want to end the season there, you know. Who knew that they should uh, have just edited it. Yeah, they should have just edited it right after that crash. Yeah. Now in fairness. adding the whole thing, burn it all down. <laughs> and the rest and, and, and the rest of their um, the rest of their season DVD is just David Moyes trying to speak Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> leave, leave it at that. Leave it at that. Well to be fair, considering the owners of uh, of West Ham, I don't want to know what the rest of the DVD will look like. Because I imagine it could be pretty, pretty bad. Like yep. it'd be more filthy and disgusting than the normal. Uh so yes, uh, we don't have any football to uh, review on this one, so we decided to do something different on this one. This is one of my ideas where uh, you guys have obviously seen or heard of these kind of tier list videos on YouTube and what's the best Premier League eleven and all these kind of wankery conversations that people have. So I thought we'd chip in with our own. I want to craft the perfect ultimate uh, Premier League eleven for a football club. And tonight, I'd like to do it for Liverpool. Woo! Uh, Yes, uh, because Rian, you are in fact a Liverpool fan. Uh, mm-hmm. Well done. You've now uh, sta- re- re-established the balance that uh, this Liquid Football podcast has been waiting to get since the start. 
It's no longer an Arsenal based so bias show. For that. I'm wearing my I'm, I'm wearing my Sadio Mane jersey with the number nineteen on the back that I regret so badly getting because like two weeks later he got the number ten shirt. No, I know that's um, that's a collector's item, lads. Come on. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not a, it was two years ago, and I was really upset, more upset than I should have been. No, nah, that's a pity. Uh, yeah, so the way this, the way we're working this is, we're going from the start of the Premier League all the way to date, and we're going to try and craft a team based of all the players that have played from Liverpool. So to make it easier, um, I basically compiled all the most common players from each season into a big pool and split them into generations. So from the 92-93 season to 97-98 is Generation 1, and we'll go through that uh, momentarily. Generation 2 consists of 98-99 to 3 4 I suppose you can call them the Gerard Houllier years. Uh, generation 3 would be 0405 to 0910. That would be the Rafa years. Uh, generation 4 would be 10, 10, 11 to 14-15, also known as the shit years. And then you have the most recent generation, which would be 15-16 to date. And that's mm-hmm. obviously the best, see- best team we've ever made, we've ever seen. And... I don't know why we're making this video in the first place, but let's just have a conversation at least. So the way we're working this is, we're going to try and craft a team based of all the players we've had, uh, best formation, and basically pick and choose who we have. But the kicker is, we can only use a certain number of players from each generation. So the maximum we can have on a team is five from each generation. So we can't just pick this season's team or the team from, like, that won the Champions League the last time out. So we have to, like discuss what players we want on the team um, mm. I think I've done a fairly good way of explaining that haven't I or do I want to say this again yes, and you just edit it out <laughs> no that's good yes, okay that's cool fantastic so uh, the first thing we need to decide on lads is a formation um, I have just provisionally a 4-4-2 but I what for, which formation do you think is best suited for Liverpool for, first of all, when do we talk about... I, I remember I gave you the idea of guilty pleasure players because I need to give a few people a mention. <laughs> I, I, I think, swear. I, I, I think what we'll do is we'll have a manager and we'll have a subs bench and I think subs bench is where we'll put some of the guilty pleasures. I think. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's all going to be Stuart Downing and shit. Yeah, that's going to be... <laughs> yeah. No, Stuart Downing is shit. You forgot to say there. It's not It's, it's not R. It's is. <laughs> Can't believe yeah, we spent okay. 17 million on Stuart Downing. But here we are. Um... So, yeah. Spoiler, he is not in the team. <laughs> he actually isn't, shockingly enough. He didn't make the call. Um, so, yes, uh, I was thinking, actually, a 4-3-3. Uh, Neil, would you have any input on that? Yeah, I went with a 4-3-3 as well. Okay, cool. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll make that change then. Um, yeah, we're all, yeah, 4-3-3 all around. Um, Honourable mentioned that Brandon Rogers is two months of success with a 3-5-2. I'm pretty sure. We'll wait a 3-4-3, wouldn't it? Yeah. No, no, you're you're um, right. It was a it was a three four three. Yeah, um, they had. Yeah. I think he had uh, actually. Yeah, it was a three five two because he had Emery Chan at left wing back and Sterling at right wing back. <laughs> and, and I think I think he had Andre Wisdom in there for a United game. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah that was uh, <laughs> memories. I never seen such an ironically named player in my life. He's doing all right for Derby now. I think. Yeah, he's fine. He's he's, he's found his niche, which is a bog standard <laughs> Championship team. Yes, as, as has Rooney. by Wayne Rooney. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we're going to kick off then uh, with goalkeepers. So, uh, again, the way this works is I basically picked the whichever prominent goalkeepers from that generation and we're going to discuss which we think is the best. So, starting off, Generation 1, uh, we have uh, David James, well-known for... Yeah, Woo! David James, yeah. He was... Now, this is, got, this is based off, the, off commonality, not necessarily quality, like he no, was there I was since to say, the start. Are you serious? You want to have a conversation about David fucking James? No, I'm, I'm not. I, 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 I was going to put him up front. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Better off than that in goal. <laughs> oh, I remember. That's the best two minutes of football ever. Have you seen that? His, his yeah. appearance in the, in the... Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. To be fair, he's a great player, terrible keeper. Um, and somehow an even worse pundit. So, Generation 2 then, it gets remarkably better. With uh, Jerzy Dudek, who uh, yeah. won the Champions League with us. Uh, generation 3 and 4 is uh, Pepe Reina. So mm-hmm. he's in the conversation. But then we have two candidates from the most recent set, which is uh, Simon Mignolet and Alisson. 
All so right. That, so um, there's our five candidates. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Where's Brucey? Uh, Bruce Gobbler. He left in '92. Oh, he was replaced shit. by David James. Yeah. Whoops. Unfortunately. Yeah. Whoops. How about no, that? absolutely. Because yeah. otherwise, like, if we could have gone back all like all over, I'd have had uh, Ray Clemens in there. Yeah, definitely yeah. Ray Clemens. Yeah, there's, there, there's no Ray. question. He was the best keeper we'll ever have. Yeah, he he really was. He was. He's partially the reason why I am a goalkeeper, despite being an Arsenal fan. Mm. Um, an uncle of mine was a mad Liverpool fan, and he fucking loved Ray Clemens. And so when I was trying to figure out what position I'd actually play in. He basically just went, oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, he was the one who pushed me towards being a goalkeeper. So I have somewhat have <laughs> Ray Clements to thank for my chosen position on a football pitch. On a moment. But um, I think we can unanimously eliminate Simon Millian Lay from here. Yeah, I, 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 I'd David, agree with that. David yeah. James. And David James, yeah. yeah. So we're down, to, okay. we're down to three already. So it's down to either Dudek, Reina, or <laughs> Allison. This is a tougher I have, choice. I have... I have I have Reina on pitch and Allison on my bench because mm. I went for the subs bench rules. I went with like actual squad rules and that you must have a goalkeeper. Yeah, mm. I think that's a fair show. You, mu you must have a backup goalkeeper. So I went with Reina and Becker on the bench. Mm. The, the tough, the tough thing for me is I, my first or probably second season where you know you have your season where you watch football but my sec my first or second season where i understood football was pepe reina's god awful season in 2010 11. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. like that sticks in my mind as like uh but before that he was great and then you've got the you've got the play versus trophies kind of argument because mm. i never watched i i've watched about 10 do there 10 jersey do deck matches in my life probably and they're all from um, matches that I knew we were going to win. So I never watched Dudek in a moment where I thought he wouldn't save the ball. Um, <laughs> like it's in, if you get what I mean. But um, I, I'm inclined to say Allison mm -hmm. because he won because he basically kept us in the Champions League last year. It's just about like who you're going to play further forward. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Allison. Yeah. Okay, Point interesting. Uh, I think I'm going to eliminate Dudek, even though it pains me to say that because. Like, Dudek, I think, wasn't necessarily the best keeper in the world. I don't think he was by any stretch of the imagination. But he was a great, he was a really good shithouse at times. You know, like, he had the Grub wobbly grubbler, legs. Grubbler. Yeah, the grobbler legs and all that. So, um, this is a pretty tough choice because I had earmarked Pepe Reina as well. Um, because it's it's kind of hard to appreciate now. Obviously, with Alisson, like, he is... Alisson is no doubt the best keeper we've ever had. I think it's because we've only had it for maybe a year or two. If this is done further down the line, I'd say maybe put Allison in. But um, you know, I, I still think he's he's still got more to come. There is there are mistakes in his in his game, and he can be a little bit uh, low, a bit injury prone as well recently. But Pepe Reina for five or six years, he was a stalwart. Like the first name of the team sheet, great leader on the pitch, and there was just no getting past him at times. I think it was mm. just punctuated sometimes by having a really bad defense in front of him. That when he when he had a bad day, it was amplified. But for for the Rafa years, he was just impervious. He was one of the best keepers and the most consistent keepers at the time. So, yeah, if if you guys are okay with it, I'm going to uh, assign well, Pepe Reina. It's two one. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. why it's. Well, also Reina, Reina for me gets the kind of nod as he was sent off one time for violent conduct against that prick Aryan Robin, uh, mm -hmm. because he took umbrage with Robin deciding that the wind was a bit too strong in the box, <laughs> and uh, went down. Um, uh, but the funny the funny thing is when you're watching it when you're watching it in like hindsight now. Watching some of his mistakes, like when you know this, this six years ago, they're quite they're quite funny. That one against Everton was God knows what the fuck he thought he was doing there. Or the beach um, ball. Let's not let's not forget the beach ball, lads. Ah, that wasn't his fault. No. That wasn't yeah, I blame him for the beach ball thing. You know? but, the, but the Everton one was like, what the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, what the hell? But anyway, yeah, Reina, fair enough. Very good. Uh, so let's move on then to our fullbacks, and we'll start off with our right back this time. Again, another interesting conversation. Uh, Generation 1 gives us uh, Welsh international Rob Jones, who I also have never heard of. 
Um, <laughs> Generation 2 didn't really have any strong right backs. Uh, Jamie Carragher was played there for quite some time alongside Vigard and Hagen, but uh, they didn't make the cut in that category. Uh, Generation 3 gave us uh, Irish superstar Steve Finnan, who now I believe works as an insurance broker, which is a fantastic switch <laughs> in life. Uh, Generation 4 then gave us Glenn Johnson, uh, formerly of Chelsea and Portsmouth. And then Generation 5, the most recent ones, we have Nathaniel Klein and Trent Alexander-Arnold, who to this day is still trying to figure out how pregnant women work. <laughs> I, uh, it pains me to eliminate Glenn Johnson, but mm-hmm. I remember... I'll give him, I'll give him the amount... I'll give him that I put him in my fancy team in 2009, 8-9, and he scored two goals against Stoke in like the second game of the season, and I was very happy. But mm. he has to go. He has to go. Uh, <laughs> he's nowhere near the two people I have in my mind, but I don't know uh, if you guys agree with Well, I think we'll, I think we'll eliminate Rob Jones. Um, just was now, he, he, was very consi- he was a very good defender, but just not like the type of wing back that we kind of purr over now. So, yeah, I'd, I'd eliminate Rob Jones. I'm not too sure on get rid of Glenn Johnson just yet. Neil, what would you what would you reckon on? Yeah, get rid of get rid of Glenn Johnson. What okay. the fuck, man? I had a good How's few that, years. He had a good few years. In a conversation. Come on. <laughs> um I I think I was what I was going to rule out was Klein. Yeah. Uh, I think he had a good two or three years but fell off a cliff then. Uh just got completely can, outclassed. Can, can cross for his life. Yeah, Couldn't unfortunately. Cross for his life. Yeah. yeah. So that leaves us then with uh, Irishman Steve Finnan and Trent. So this this seems like a no contest to me, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. I didn't live in the Steve. I didn't live um, like again knowing football in the Steve Finnan era. I heard he was a great right back. Mm. Yeah, he could really, really fucking cross the ball properly. Like he was, he was. Not the archetypal attacking right back, but he was definitely a very, very fucking good one. He had a really good cross. Like, he'd really, really... He was encouraged to bomb forward and really cross. And he was a good defender as well. Did, yeah, he, play he, was for, always a... did he play Did he play much for Ireland? Yeah, he got, like, fucking 60 caps or something like that. Uh, he he seemed like that kind of Seamus Coleman type right back where he was very good at crossing, but he could also kind of slot in when he yeah when he... pretty much actually yeah to, to be honest with you if i was to draw a good analogy between he was basically seamus coleman back in 2000 yeah yeah 2001 yeah. 2002 <clears throat> um, yeah but i don't know when when you say it's an no contest for you i don't know what yeah which one is it it's, it's for Johnson. me it's it's trent for me i think trent yeah. is like the most the most talented player we'll we'll have in a very very long time, and the, the reason I say that is because like that talent wasn't like you didn't know you didn't know the first time you saw him how good he was, but the fact that he was starting as a sixteen year old against Man United, there's a reason why that was. Like the players, like coaches saw the talent there, and it, it's just the, the the power he has in his in his foot, just the swing crosses from any position, the free mm-hmm. kicks, the set pieces. Just the, the 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 wit that he has on the pitch, you know, like the we all know about the quick corner and all the sort of stuff. But he does other cheeky things on the pitch as well that are just like they're they're revolutionary, you know, like they're not expected yeah. from a right back. Yeah, I remember the Vinaldum goal against Cardiff. That was another great corner. Yes. Um, yeah. Exactly. The, the other my my best trend moment from this season was the cross for Firmino's goal against Man City. Was it? The one where the ball bounced. Yes. Which one was that? Yeah, that's yeah, right. It was yeah. Trent. Yeah. That was a fantastic cross. So yeah, we're going. We're going for. Uh, we're going for Trent. Would you? Would you go with yeah. that, Neil? Yeah, sure. Um. Yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it kind of hurts not to bring Steve Finnan into the conversation, but it's he. He is a world class player. There's no doubt that, that, that about that. But going up against Trent, I, I think it's a it's a it's a hard one to to not put down. Okay, so that moves us then to uh, left back and uh, some uh, really, a real class above here, lads. I'll tell you that much. Um, <laughs> generation one, we have uh, Stig Ing Bjornby. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, whatever that chuckle there explains everything. Uh, an honourable mention goes into this is Dominic Matteo, uh, who was with, her, with us for a couple of years, then moved on to Leeds. Uh, generation two and three was occupied by John Arnarisa. Uh, who, fun fact by the way, was my favorite player growing up. I uh, so Ooh. so you you'll be shocked to hear who I'm picking on this set. Um, 
Generation 4 has the uh, the legend that is Jose Enrique. And uh, Generation 5 is our current left back, Andy Robertson. So I'm going to put my cart on the table. I am picking John Anarisa outright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my first, my first real memory was uh, John Arnaiz, a thunder bastard against Tottenham. He had so, like fifty of them. Like that was yeah. his, that was his default setting was to just hit things from forty yards and then show off his abs. Oh, that um, that yeah, that fucking goal against United. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. the, um, I love, Robertson's our beautiful little shit house. If he was on any other team, I'd hate, I'd hate the guts of him. <laughs> I know it's a cause like I'm not used to having shit houses on the team. Like I know we've had like we've had one per team. We've had like the likes of Suarez and maybe I don't know Skirtle. You could throw in that category, but Robert Robertson being our little cunt, it just makes it feel so much better. Like it's just I don't think uh, would Suarez really be a shit house? I mean, it's not shit house for me to just racially abuse a bunch. Of- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is pretty shit house. Like I'm just saying, being a racist is pretty bad. Just throwing put, it out there. I put mm. Mascherano in there. You can do a shit. Oh house yeah, Mascherano. Yes. Great Mascherano great will get pocket. will get in any fucking shit house eleven. Yeah. Um. But anyway, it's between Honor Arnaiz and Andrew Robinson. Um. Honor yeah, mentioned Enrique. Really uh, yeah. Enrique's had a Enrique's had a tough few years. And he, yeah, he has. Uh, he's, he has. He's the most interactive ex Liverpool player on social media as well. So he gets an honorable mention for that as well. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> And to his I'm credit, I'm glad, I'm glad he's getting better as well because I I never had any ill will to Jose. He was just Bro. he was great for two or three years, and then the fitness just fell off a cliff. Like there was just that was it. Like yeah, yeah. I went with Robertson. Okay, no, it's me. So it's I'm going me. for I, I'm going for Risa. So it's it's up to you, uh, Brian. No pressure, like. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, recency by recency bias would normally play a part here, but. Um, how many good years did Risa have? Twelve. Yeah, that's the thing. He had a lot. I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Premier League years used the fuck out of all of his goals. I swear he was used a lot in Premier League years. Yeah, he was uh, a fantastic um, compilation manager. <laughs> yeah. Um, because of things further up the field as well, I'm gonna go and giving us a bit more, like a bit more room to maneuver up, up further up field. We'll go with John and Risa. Okay. He did because he, he did because Robertson, Robertson another trophy and I'd give Robertson it. But John and Risa, John, it comes down to he won he won more trophies and he scored a lot more goals. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a good reasoning. Yeah. Okay. That now leads us to our centre back partnership. So, uh, obviously, we're picking two defenders here. So I have a class of ten here to choose from. Okay. So from generation one. We have the uh, the dream team of Mark Wright and Neil Razor Ruddock. Razor Ruddock, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen God. more of I've seen more of him naked on TV than I have his matches. <laughs> <laughs> to be open. fair, that is the that is the case for everybody as well. <laughs> so in all fa- uh, in all fairness, his him being naked is actually far more offensive than half the fouls he used to put in. He did. Uh, he, uh, he, he did. He did. He did teabag James Corden. So like, he's a hero in Ireland. Yeah, he's a. He, he'll get an honorable mention just for that. To be fair, yeah. uh, we also have in this category uh, Phil Bab, who uh, you know did the honorable thing and uh, castrate himself on a goalpost. So, who uh, <laughs> will not go silent on this night for him? Um, Generation two, three then has Jamie Carragher. So. Uh, Kind of a, a an obvious option there, alongside Sammy Hippia. So he's in. He uh, goes through two generations as well. Uh, generation four then is the dream team ish of Martin Skirtle and Daniel Agger. Uh, for when well, I say dream team, it's a dream team if you're a tattoo artist. And then Generation five has uh, just for longevity, he makes the cut. Dejan Lovren. Uh, then the team of Joel Matip and Virgil Van Dijk. So. Um, I think it's probably best to start eliminating players now yeah. and then seeing yeah. what we're left with. So I am I think I'm going to do the right thing here and eliminate Lovren. I think we can all agree and, on that. And, yeah, and replace him with Ragnar Clavan. <laughs> Lord Clavan. You will address him Where, by his uh, real title, you little shit. Yeah. It's Lord Clavan. Uh, Lord Clavan. It's the only his player of the year. Four <laughs> years in a row. <laughs> uh, great player. What a talent. Um, oh Neil, who would you like um, to eliminate from that class? 
Uh, probably Matea. Uh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, get rid of Bab, Hippia, and Carragher. <sighs> oh, Hippia. Oh. And also was, get rid I... of Mark Wright as well. Mark Wright as well. Yeah. Do uh, yeah, not was... get rid of Carragher. Don't get rid of Carragher. No. Um, no. What? No. No. Definitely not. No. Um, get rid of Matip. He's great, but he hasn't. Pl- he's been injured and he hasn't played a lot. Can't get rid of the one of the best players on the planet right now because of all the finals he's gotten into Dijan Lovren. <laughs> no, I think we can. I, I think we can. Yeah, I, I think we can do that. Yeah. I feel perfectly comfortable. <laughs> okay. yeah. We yeah, can no. narrow it down to three. Can we? I think we can. I think we can probably eliminate Willock. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, you I think so. You can't. You can't actually. You know. Eliminate a man who once broke both of and- Andy Cole's legs in a reserve match. Um, this is then... the this is this is not the shit house eleven again. <laughs> what? Um... Oh come on! And then, uh, <laughs> then years later, joked about it, say I didn't mean to break both of his legs. If I'm honest, I only meant to break one. <laughs> I do love Razor, but this is. This is based off quality, and Razor was like oh, and, uh, it was oh, was not a quality. quality I, I mean, and, uh, his name, and, his, and his name's Neil as well. Here, Jonathan, if if, if, Neil, if Neil's not if Neil's not presenting the uh, the shit house eleven episode, then there's something. Wrong <laughs> That's understandable. We'll just have to find another shit house to do the podcast. Uh. Absolutely. Oh yeah, no, no, I can, I can understand. He, he was not the best. Um, he was not the best player. No. So I, I, I did break. I did. He did break Peter Beardley's. Peter Beardsley's jaw in a testimonial. Mm. <laughs> well, that that has seen, that has aged well, in fairness, considering what's happened to Beardsley. So yeah, as well as he's a he's a yeah, man of the people. True. He's up so there with Beardsley Neville Southall. Really sued. Beardsley nearly sued him over that. Yeah, Beardsley but he couldn't understand what he was saying, so it didn't yeah. it didn't work out. Yeah. It's a little hard to talk when you got your jaw wired shut. <laughs> that's true. I don't I, I don't think that's what Jonathan was referring to. I think Jonathan was referring to his accent. <laughs> One one off the yeah. leads into the other. In fairness, yeah, one off yeah. the dog. All right, let's go. Right, let so me... we're gonna cut off Razor. Uh, so that Aww, leads us down. I think, um, it kind of hurts me to say this because I really did like these two, but I'm gonna have to cut off Skirt and Agar. Yeah, uh, Dan, uh, Daniel's doing his tattoos. He's all right. Yeah, no, I I I, I love both players. I mean, Skirtle. I, I think Neil wants to cut off Skirtle because how many goals did he score against you guys? Six oh. goals. About yeah, that he, yeah. He used to love that, but then we kind of got him back after Giroud stood, literally stood right on his head. That's true. Yeah, he but, did do yeah, that. But then, but then he did score that game. Yeah. He did actually score in that game. Yeah, the damage was done. <laughs> that, that that was that era where you guys kept nearly winning at Anfield, and we always got a draw in the end. Yeah, Joe Allen. Ah, oh, we Joe. We Joe. Fuck we Joe Allen. Where is he? He's Stoke. not in here. Fucking disgusting behavior. <laughs> we he's not he's not in the midfield position. He's in the farmers um, formation, so that's he's not in the he's not oh. currently in the cup. But again, there's always space for honorable mentions. Um, yeah, to, to, to use the to use wrestling terms, the fact he got so over <laughs> this beyond me, beyond but he, me. But he's a beautiful player. Like you've ever heard of Brendan Rodgers? Brendan Rodgers is literally in love with Joe Allen. Like he wants we, to fucking we Joe. We Joe. The Welsh Javi, I think you'll find. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> yes, so um, so yes, we're going to cut off uh, Skirt and Agar. So we're left in with a four of Carragher, Hippia, and Mativ and Van Dyke. Can we just pull Van Dyke in right now and argue between the other three? Um, yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a fair shout, yeah. We'll do that. So Van Dyke is in. So that leaves us then with the other three. So um, I was, shockingly, this is why I kind of was out, outraged with Neil, but I was going to uh, suggest Sammy Hippia over yeah. Carragher. Yeah, um, like there was just like he was huge. Like there was he was a an immobile beast, but he was a brilliant mm. defender. Like he just mm. there was no getting past him at times. There really wasn't. The eight on goals brings the carga <laughs> down the points a little bit. Um, mm. I thought Sammy Hippie and he scored important goals. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have got through against Arsenal in the Champions League. We wouldn't have got through against Juventus in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. That's very true, actually. Yeah, very very true. People forget uh, that Arsenal goal. People forget that Arsenal goal because of the second leg. But that goal would have that if that, we hadn't got that away, we would have been screwed. 
Yeah, definitely. I think that's probably why Neil is uh, wanted to eliminate him, to be honest. <laughs> Just brought back In horrible fairness, memories. Um, it would be good to have two backs who can put a goal. Yeah, yeah exactly. Neil was halfway through and not uh, himself after uh, Theo Walcott's run when fucking bad. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, so uh, are, we, are we all agreeing on Sammy Hippia then? We are. We yeah, okay. I'll go with that. Okay, so Sammy Hippia, Hippia, Hippia it Hippia is. Van Dijk. Carragher, Carragher was we'll just have Carragher was a very close, very close yeah thing. he is even for the just for the longevity at, at least like he was there for so Although long. Like, fairness, you can expect to be on the end of a very sternly worded email from somebody who is not Gene Neville. <laughs> oh, him and Gary, ne- him and Gary Neville on YouTube, brilliant. Honestly, we've uh, they, we've spoken at length about how they basically do want to f- need to fuck each other, but they just can't won't let each other do it because of their forbidden. Oh, but love. they may. They made they've made me like Gary Neville. Like genuinely, I don't mind Pundit Gary Neville. I... No, Pundit Gary Neville is quite good, particularly when him and uh, Carragher have to kind of mock argue with each other because it's very obvious that two of them are blatantly in love with each other. His, his it's beautiful. Love. It's really no, beautiful. No one wants to. No one wants to grow up to be a Gary Neville. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying inside. I think the the. the was it the fucking Sky Sports who did that? Who got the two of them to comment, do commentary on? A, was it a football manager match where it was just a team of eleven yeah. Gary Neville yes, versus that's a right, team yeah. of eleven Jimmy characters? And I was just like, if that football manager was coded any which way, shape, or form with regards to reality, those twenty-two players would have just had a mass orgy in the middle of the fucking <laughs> <game>. <laughs> with Gaddy, the subs Gaddy. bench with the subs bench. Hosing them down with fucking <laughs> industrial quantities of lubricant. Oh, Gary, but here's Gary, the, all being yeah. a sweet arms, Gary, 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 <laughs> Gary, 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 Gary. It's like having a choice between two blokes and nicking your wife. <laughs> <laughs> and they're running off with Gary Neville of all plate football people. <laughs> so anyway, our back four, um, about our defensive lineup, if you like, goalkeeper so far is Pepe Reina, and our defensive line is Virgil Van Dijk, Sammy Hippia in the centre. John Anarisa on the left and Trent Alexander Arnold on the right. So so far so good, lads. That leads us then to our midfield three. So what I've done here, I've separated them into like defensive and attacking midfielders and a few like central players as well, just to kind of like branch out the, the teams a bit. We can but we can put any three we we want, whichever we think is the is the best uh, lineup. So uh, all those all, all those wingers have played in the centre attack and midfield role. I'm pretty positive. Oh, definitely, yeah. Like they were very interchangeable back then because everyone was running yeah. at the midfield four, so they always used to jog, jog back around. So that's kind of why I put like John Barnes was was a great case that because he was a central midfielder, but he always played out wide. So I'm kind of putting mm. him in the in the left midfield winger category. So uh, with that in mind, then, so we'll start off with our defensive players uh, from Generation One, but doesn't make the cut is uh, Paul Ince because he's a traitor. Um, Generation Two uh, gives us. Uh, RTE Pundit and all round uh, silly German, Dietmar Hamann. Uh, Generation 3 then is when it gets fun. Uh, the lineup, the, t- the duo of uh, Xabi Alonso and Javier Mascherano. Uh, in all fairness, both of them are in it for me. I-, I have Alonso in with Mascherano on the bench. Mm. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's no, possible. Be, Definitely possible. To, to be honest, I want Hamann in just purely for the story of him and Jamie Carragher in Japan. <laughs> Genu- genuinely, genuinely, that is the funniest, funniest story. Wait a minute, ever. hang on. Well, he can't have Haman in for the funny story, and I don't get Razor Ruddock in for breaking both of Andy Cole's legs. Right? You can if, fuck off. But have you have, 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 have you have you heard this story? I have. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking it gas. Deserves, yeah, it deserves, yeah. Wait a minute, break, breaking both of Andy Carroll, breaking both of Andy Cole's legs definitely deserves. Like, in a Jamie fucking Carragher. reserve match. In a reserve match, of all things. You didn't even need to tackle him. You Deep just Hama- Dietmar <laughs> Haman in a Japanese prison. Let me repeat. Dietmar <laughs> Haman for trying to hail a taxi, standing on top of a taxi. Tell me that doesn't... <laughs> genuinely, please tell me that doesn't deserve to go in. Again, lads, I just want to remind you that we do have space on the subs bench. Like, we do... We can put the banterous, <laughs> banterous players there. I'm just saying, like, we do have other spaces available. It's a squad the of... banter it, it, bench. The banter bench, exactly. We can put all of our fun players in there. Um, <laughs> so, in terms of the defensive midfielders, Generation 4 gives us the legend that is Lucas Leiva. Um, 
So I think we all know what we're going to say if he doesn't get in. Uh, Lucky. Lucky. Uh, Generation 5 gives us uh, Emre Chan, who uh, is now at Dortmund because he wanted more money. And, uh, of course, our current defensive midfielder, Fabinho, who uh, will be in this cut. So, the class, what I've, I've, I split him into the five, which is Haman, Alonso, Mascherano, Leiva, and Fabinho. So, there's that. Uh, our central midfielders uh, from Generation 1 is uh, all-round preened uh, pundit, Jamie Redknapp. Who uh, I believe said one time like a corner is this is a corner and this is a ball, you know just fantastic top class punditry. Uh, <laughs> great golfer, to be great clear. golfer as well, yeah, and does fantastic ads as well, you know really he yeah. really is his father's son. Uh, generation two, three, and four gives us Steven Gerrard, shockingly, uh, not sure how that worked out, uh, but we also have Danny Murphy in Generation two. And uh, Jordan Henderson then pops up then in uh, Generation 4 and 5 alongside uh, James Milner and Georgina Wijnaldum, who also throws into this uh, conversation. Ox- Oxlade Chamberlain would make the cup, but he just hasn't been at the club long enough. But uh, same with the likes of Keita. Um, I, 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 I will admit I've watched him dan- that dance with Perry Edwards at least 400 million times since he came out. I think it's like I, I, I reckon it's somebody's alarm clock at this stage, and people like try and do that shuffle and then break their ankle on a fucking staircase every single morning. Oh, I, I've tried. I don't have a marble staircase, so I definitely, I, I, I've, I've no genetics either, so I can't do it. So. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, it's pretty bad to do that shuffle when you have no kneecaps, and it's hard enough for us to try it ourselves. So you know, yeah. best not to bother. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it is, a, <laughs> it, it is, it is a, it is a wonderful little clip. You should check it out. Uh, then we have our attacking midfielders, only a class of four, I'm afraid, because we've been a boring team for a long, long time. Uh, Generation 1 uh, gave us Patrick Berger, um, well known for Thunder Cunts himself. He was also in Generation 2, but Gen 2 also gave us Vladimir Spitzer, who was also there. Uh, Generation 4 and 5 gave us Philip Coutinho and, and then Adam Lalana. So that's our class of four. So we have a lot of midfielders to work off. Uh, again, maybe we might try and pick some of them off first, and uh, then we yeah. see what we're left with. Lalana, bye bye. Um, <laughs> I okay. think we can all agree on that. Yeah, I think, I think we that's can all fair. agree on that. Yeah, yeah. He gave us every midfielder here gave us some good moments. I mean, you mentioned Emre Chan, mm. that bicycle kick, and he scored. He scored the best goal of his career two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Um, yes, that's right. Yeah. What a what a goal that was, but. Yeah, they've all given us moments, but they're not going to get into an all-time level. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I I probably said the same thing about Smeetzer for his goal in the Champions League final, so I was gonna I was gonna take him out as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Danny Murphy as well. Yeah, Danny Murphy, miserable bastard. Is hey. is he the is he the worst pundit, lads? Danny Murphy. No, Jermaine Genus is. I don't. I, I, I'm trying to do an impression. Isn't doesn't he start every sentence in match today? Well, I don't know Gary or something. I, I I'm convinced he disagrees with Gary Lineker every time he says something. Um, well, it depends. Like if Gary Lineker's piling into Arsenal, he'll fucking agree with. Him. Um, but he's a, he's just a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks if you're listening, Danny. Uh... He is. He's just an arsehole. Uh, no, he's just no idea what he's doing. I think when he says, I don't know, and then he realises that he's being paid to know, and then he kind of, his mind brain just snaps back in. And he's like, oh, uh, you know. Uh. Uh, but if there's a loose ball at Old Trafford, he's your man. <laughs> That's fair. He, he, was, he was very good at that, in fairness. It was his one and only skill. Um, as much as it pains me the... to say this, yeah, it, 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 as much as it pains me to say this, um, I'd have to exclude Patrick Berger as well because I do love I loved all of his long shots, but it was the only thing he was good at. I'm afraid to say <laughs> he was. That's good. He That's was a limited player. Yeah, he is. He is. So I'll take him out for the moment. Um, uh, I'm gonna have my painful one now. Um, Dirk Kout. Um, I have Dirk Kout in as the right wingers. Oh, so we'll, sorry. We'll, we'll, sorry. We'll we'll get to him. Yeah, we'll get to him. My apologies. No I'm worries. No worries. Screen. I'd get uh, rid of uh, Lavia as well, Lucas Lavia. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to yeah. do that. I love Lucas myself because he was such a deliberately shit player, but I, no, I think no, have to. Jurgen Klopp, that, that clip, I watched that, <laughs> I watched that all day. <laughs> the shot that against Everton. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, like he did score a goal for us like years and years he's, ago. Like, but didn't he score? Didn't he score when we got knocked out of the FA Cup? Was that it? Did he score that was against Barnes? 
He got Apparently. yeah, Barnsley. That's right. Yeah, he did. That was one of two goals he scored. There was a there was a league goal back in like oh like ten or twelve ten or eleven, and that oh, was Newcastle. the only goal he scored. New- Newcastle. That's right. Yeah, yeah and uh, and that was the only one. But the gas thing was like it, it was because he was always that defensive shield for us, and then he went to Lazio and scored two in his first two games. Like, just <laughs> you can't yeah, really you, you people, can't write this. Yeah, his stint at centre back is great as well. But people don't give him the credit. Either. People have him in the same bracket as like, oh, he was crap, but he had his moments. He was a good centre defensive midfielder. Yeah, he was. He, he was like, like, there's no denying that. Yeah, we'll get rid of. D Mark a man can surf on a taxi out of this fucking conversation. <laughs> I, I think uh, he's acquiesced, Neil, so I think that was going to be your call as well, wasn't it? So Yeah, it was going to happen. Yeah, fair. So the, the the field is narrowing a good bit now. Um, this is going to hurt, but I'm going to exclude Fabinho. Yep. Um, re- he, he's, he's been good, but not for long enough. Yep. Maybe in five years we'll do this again and he'll get in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, um, I think it's an. Oh, it's so diff. Um, Wayne Alden can go. Tough call. Um, tough ah. call, but I'd be I'd be willing to say so. Yeah, like he will. He's a brilliant player, and he's been a great player for us in particular. But in in a midfield tree, he's not going to make the call. Yeah, I leave, I'll leave you guys to do a few, but I personally keep Mil- I keep keep Milner in there for as long as possible because he's been here long <laughs> enough I'd get rid of red nap yep okay yeah I'll take that uh, so now we're, leave- we're left in with a class of uh, six which is interesting yeah. so we we have Xabi Alonso Javier Mascherano Steven Gerrard Jordan Henderson James Milner and Philip Coutinho so I think the best thing to do is perhaps we all make a case of our midfield tree and just see which ones are the most compelling so, uh, mm. Neil, do you want to start us off? Yeah, sure. My midfield, uh, my DM is Xavi. Uh, central mid is Steven Gerrard, um, mm-hmm. with the attacking mid being Coutinho. Okay. Um, that is remarkably the exact same one I had. <laughs> this is a far <laughs> more easier I've, conversation I've, I've I thought Mascherano, it would be. I know. I have Mascherano on the bench. Okay, that's fair. Uh, yeah, so that I was going to go for the exact same mix. Uh, All right, that's... That's Reen, a, two on. Uh, well, what was your, what would be your thoughts, uh, Reem, just for pig iron? The one I the one I the one I liked to put down is was Jabby, James Milner, and uh, Stephen Gerrard in the ten because I my my best my only Liverpool match he played in the ten. Even though I went mm. home crying that day, he played a great game in the ten against Everton. Um, scored a great goal. Um, but he's not a ten. I yeah. know, but he played him. Him and Torres were fantastic. But oh, he's not a ten, is he? Oh no! He, um, no, traditionally he's like a number. He's a central yeah. field. Like he's a number that, eight, I guess. But that year he played his centre forward role almost. I think um, Benitez had him right up against Torres, and it was some of the best interplay. I remember they scored a goal against Redden that was fucking fantastic. But we'll go with your midfield. Um, your midfield three, or is Jamie Redden? I'll call it a midfield four because he can't count. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think that's I think that's a fair shout. I think I, I think that's a that's a solid midfield. So just to confirm, the midfield is Xabi Alonso, uh, mm. Steven Gerrard, and Philip Coutinho. So that's a that's a fucking tasty team so far, lads. I must say. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Coutinho. I mean, in all fairness, you can't really pick anybody but Gerrard. Mm-hmm. Um, and but Coutinho, I, I, you've not gotten a better attacking midfielder since him. Yeah. I really don't think. I really don't think so. Yeah. No. Sha- it, Shakiri, if he was fit, he could get very close. I, 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 I'm convinced Shakiri is fantastic when he's fully fit. But when does that ever occur? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I, under, I understand that, that was kind of the sting of the tail, but like, I mean, like, fucking uh, like Arsenal. I could, be, I could build a starting eleven out of players. I could say that about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, he'd be fucking brilliant if he could stop his hamstrings from snapping like fucking banjo strings. Or if he, um, or if, or if he hated, or if he didn't hate Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, or if he didn't fucking hate Arsenal. But uh, yeah, that's just it. Like uh, you yeah. can't. I think Xabi Alonso. I don't think Xabi Alonso misplaced a pass in his Liverpool career. I don't think it's possible for him to misplace a pass. Yeah, no. he was just he was peerless. Like even even at the time of Liverpool, like we were like we remember the freak goals he had against the likes of Luton, maybe and the, and the, and Newcastle. We just you know it, I think it's time for me to hit it from fifty yards, and just like 
you were saying about Philip Coutinho being like the best like attacking midfielder we've ever had, and we've never truly replaced him. I suppose one would argue we don't need to. But no, you, I would never... say that, that the whole reason you don't need to, that's the reason why he's not been replaced is because the team had to be rejigged so mm-hmm. that his position didn't technically exist. Yes. And for which, me, which has been the case everywhere role. else, really. Yeah, for me, it does the, the kind of hybrid sub striker attacking midfielder role very, very fucking well. Yeah, yeah, he does. Um, but what's your point about Jabby Alonso? Like, we have never had a player that naturally talented in the midfield ever since. Like we've I always don't. had, we've always had functional players, the likes of your Hendersons and Milners, but we've never had someone who just exudes class. Mm, I think the only person I've seen get close to his passing, and we put Jared up there as well, obviously. But Trent is getting close to his passing when he's on. But I don't think Xabi Alonso was ever off like Trent can be in like the odd yeah. game. I don't think Xabi Alonso never had an odd game off. I don't remember it in my life, and I, I obviously you guys probably. Live through more the Jabi Alonso here I did. I don't think he had an off game. No, you'd be you'd be right in that assessment. Like he was always perpetually good. Like he, there has never been a time he hasn't been. And the worst thing we've ever done. Like okay, gra- granted, selling the likes of maybe like selling our star players has been something Liverpool's done forever. Like it's it's something that we've like we've had to do to survive. The likes of your Owens, your Torreses, but the one that really hurt us was Alonso. Like we never recovered from that, and it took us maybe. I suppose until until Coutinho arrived to actually get a midfield that looked so dangerous, you know, because Alonso Alonso was that different type of player where um, he could sit in the number six but still lob it thirty yards and make a goal out of it. You know, it was it was ludicrous how he played, but he was so good, there was no denying it. Yeah, right. So. That's 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 a midfield and a half. Now Indeed. this is where the. I think we're going to have a big argument with these three. I'm Indeed we are. <laughs> Indeed we are. Because what we've done in now, because like, like w- w- wide players and wingers have been transitioning over the years, so I basically combined players that played right midfield, left midfield with wingers of today. So this is where the conversation gets interesting. So we're going to start off on the right this time. Uh, <coughs> starting off, we have our right midfield uh, trigger, also known as Jason McAteer. Someone who, uh, you know, he was always very good with his diet. He didn't. Uh, he only ate six slices of pizza, not eight. Um, <laughs> but then we had nobody on the right midfield for a while because it was mostly Gerrard. Until we got the uh, Dutch starlet himself, Dirk Kite, as our official right winger. <laughs> uh, but then, but then we had the likes of Raheem Sterling, who uh, uh, now plays on the left, but he, he was a right winger for us at the time, and uh, someone called Mohamed Salah who uh, recently has broken into the team and has done fairly well so far. Um, We'll see how it goes. So that's our right wing choices. Left wing choices then. This is a very interesting class. Um, First off, we have John Barnes uh, and Steve McManaman from Generation 1. Then further on, then we have uh, Australian superstar Harry Kuehl, when he was actually fit. Uh, And now currently Sadio Mane. So we have a team... Sadio Mane is the best player in the world. If your, yeah. auntie had a dick, she'd be, if your auntie had a dick, she'd be your uncle, but she's not. So. <laughs> that's the... uh, now, this is the, this is the fun one. This is, this is where the arguments are going to start off, because we only have space for one striker here. So, from Generation 1, we have Ian Rush and Robbie Fowler, also known as God, to his friends. Uh, from Generation 2, we've got Michael Owen and Emil Heskey. Super Heskey. Super Heskey. Uh, from generation Chaos. three, so yeah, sorry, Reed. That that's where conditioned to do that. I'm sorry, it's a. Ah oh, no, it's it's, it's my it's, generation. I fully it, it, didn't expect you to. It's brainwashing. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> like every time, every time I say that word, we have to say that afterwards. So yeah, uh, Le- sorry, I was I was actually looking. Leo Vragers fucking doing some fucking announcement right now. So. Oh, fair enough. My apologies. Yeah, we, we've, we, we've, we've, we're going to so, die. So while we're being told everything is locked down, we decided, yes, this is the right time to do a podcast. <laughs> the last podcast we'll ever do, lads. Yeah. Um, we're all homophobes. We're all going to die. <laughs> so Generation 3 uh, gives us Fernando Torres and the far more talented player, Peter Crouch. Uh, Generation far 4 then, talented. far more talent. Great, great touch for a big player. Um Gen 4 then gives us uh, the madman known as Luis Suarez. And our Mm. current uh, crop gives us Roberto Firmino, 
So, mm. I suppose we better switch back to the right wing and decide who we want to put there. I first want to, as I was saying, guilty pleasure, Dirk Howe was amazing, um, but we're going to have to eliminate him. Yeah. And um, I want him eliminated by way of Peter Crouch um, destroying him with a go-kart. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it, it is the only way he can die, in fairness. It's the only way to defeat him. Yeah, much, yeah just take him out fucking uh, Mario Kart style. <laughs> yeah, because Xabi uh, Alonso's in the team. He lived. Yeah, exactly. Um, I suppose it's only fair to exclude Trigger then as well. Yeah. So oh, I we're... watched him. Yeah, I watched him play the Legends game a few weeks. The Liverpool versus Ireland Legends game. Fucking hell, he was blown out of his arse in halfway through that match. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastard. Poor to be bastard. fair, I, Sorry, I think like... I think Razor was the set. Like, I think I think Razor was fitter, which says a lot about. Trigger, you know? The years have not been kind to him. Oh, Jesus. He was, wasn't he? So now it's down to... Sorry, uh, no, no, you're still there. You're still there. Uh, I'm yeah. Uh, that leaves us then with Salah and Sterling. Okay. Um, Salah. Salah. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think it was a contest, to be honest. So, yes, Salah gets in the team. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Sterling, you were... He was good, but he just. You, you, sometimes your your heart your our, our heart can take over. Sometimes when we're deciding these teams, mm. and I think me and Jonathan's hearts are taking over a little bit here, and our heads as well, because Salah is a fantastic player, and Sterling is so hot and cold. But yeah, yeah, he was hot I'm and cold for us. Sterling still. on my bench. I'm no, Sterling as a bench player. No, I'll just work out on my bench. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe maybe that's where the arguments are coming from. Come from. I don't know. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, to this see. bench is gonna blow up, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we go to the opposite flank. Then so uh, this is the tough one. I think we'll have to exclude Kuehl because he was a good player, but he was just never fit. It was never. Yeah. I think we we'll have to do that. So yeah, we'll exclude Kuehl. So then we're left yeah, with Barnes, Barnes, McManaman, or Mane. Ah, uh, yeah, but. Kiel was like Robertson in that he his substitution led to us winning a very important Champions League game. This is very true. Fun. So yeah. we'll give him an honor, honorable mention to Harry Kiel. Mm -hmm. uh, Neil, have you any uh, consideration? What would you? Who would you exclude from this class? Uh, Barnes. Yeah, pains me to say it, but yeah, definitely Barnes. Uh, so this is the interesting one. Then I mean, Manny seems like the obvious choice to me. But, but I, I don't think we can deny how naturally talented McManaman was. Like, he was so ahead of the curve when it came to wingers that he was, like, practically invented the, the fucking position at the time. Yeah. Um, again, it's my 18-year-old head that says Matt, that leans towards Manny. I mm. watched a lot of Steve McManaman. That goal against Arsenal was another fantastic Liverpool goal. Yeah. Um, but... I, 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 I'll quote that beautiful Liverpool fan on Redman TV. Sadio Mane is the best player in the world. And yeah, I, I'd be inclined to agree. I think I think Mane has to get in above McManaman. As 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 aggrieved I am to say that, I think it has to be the case. And yeah, I'll go, I'll go down with that. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Mane is in the team. So we've we're now up to four players from this current set, but uh, so we it's either Firmino or Bust. It seems. So. Out of, the t out of the players I mentioned there, so we've got Rush, Fowler, Owen Heskey, Torres, Crouch, Suarez, Firmino. Who doesn't make the cut? Peter. Unfortunately, Peter crashes on a goal card two minutes later. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it kind of pains me, but I have to agree with you. But Crouch, Crouchy was also, a great didn't player. Also, uh, didn't we have Alexander-Arnold? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would make it five from this team, wouldn't it? No, no, no. we don't have, we don't have Alisson. Oh, yeah, we, we, we went for Reina for keeper. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The thing is, type. Peter Crouch. I never knew why he crashed a go kart, but then I realized how the fuck did he fit into a go kart? <laughs> <laughs> it's custom made. It's like he was, it's like so he was piloting it from space. <laughs> in, no, <laughs> enough with the go karts, Crouchy, you're gone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I think I'm gonna just because, like, at this stage, at the, when the Premier League started, he was like 37, so I'll have to exclude in Rush. Oh yeah, <laughs> but he was like he was one of our best strikers, and there's no denying that. Like just prolific. Like he was Shearer before Shearer. There's no denying that. Yeah, 
and um, he still represents the club very fucking well. So. Absolutely, one of the best ambassadors we have. Yeah, um, Robbie. I'll keep Robbie. Uh, Heskey. Super, Super Heskey. Heskey. Jesus Heskey. Christ, Ryan, stop doing that. Heskey's got to go. Super, Super Heskey. Heskey. Um, Emil has to go. <laughs> Emil. Seriously, man, I was on it. I was on a disconnection from the call. Yeah, Emil, yeah. Emil gets you to go. Cut him, cut him. <laughs> um, no, okay. I'll have to admit, my the striker I went with was El Nino. Yeah, yeah. I Sorry. actually, ooh. Well, I've literally never seen a more lethal striker in a red top since Thierry Henry. <laughs> hmm. um, he, never, he never won a trophy. That's my never idea. even did a war. Never even did a war, lads. Fucking disgusting. Uh, but no, but like I yeah, but the fact that he didn't win a trophy wasn't really his fault. I mean he literally did fucking everything he could. <laughs> um, yeah. He was um, just so fucking good. But he was so fucking good. It's just that he played for a fairly back end weak Liverpool team. Yeah. Um if he, yeah, I guarantee he's probably looking at the current Liverpool defensive setup and going motherfucker i would be cleaning up with this mother i would be cleaning up with this setup yeah. or even half this setup didn't yeah. even need to go i didn't even need allison he's like if you're just giving me that dutch fucker in the middle i'd have been brilliant mm. i think the goal that destroy i don't know I, this is just a, another one of me being like weird with my like thought process but i remember i i, I hear the commentators go on about oh there wasn't wasn't enough power on the cross or anything these days and I remember we lost a match, but it was United Old Trafford, and he scored that header. There was literally no power on that cross whatsoever, and he managed to beat one of the best keepers in the world. Yeah, he just, had to, he, just, he just had to generate all of it with his neck, and I was like, I'm amazed his fucking his head didn't come off. Yeah, because it was like, like people, strikers get let off these days because they can't get any power into their headers. There has to be some whip on the cross, which... In this generation, there is, but Jesus Christ, the man could do anything. And that got against Blackburn. Oh. Uh-huh. Jamie Carragher with the only assist of his career. <laughs> yeah. Um, Torres is an option, but the one I was going to go for was Luis Suarez. Oh. No, no. Suarez no. was chaos. Like, I've never seen a player so mental on a football pitch. Like, he. Like, I'm off it, of it. And off of it's it, just yes. getting him onto the pitch oh, was yeah, the fucking no, thing. Like, I I accept that. I absolutely accept that. But the man was a he's a force of nature. There is no there has not been a player like Suarez in the Premier League since. Like he's in a same but way. A lot like, of that is a good thing. It, it is a good thing. No, I, I I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. He had a lot of fucking baggage. In a vacuum, though, like look at the goals he scored against Norwich. Look at the overall play. The the, the goal against Newcastle, where he basically. Hits he gets two players in the blind spot, then put takes it on the out like on the inside of his foot to take it away from the keeper and then just tap it in. The fact he was able to snake behind two centre backs and the goalkeeper at the same time, you you can't teach that. Like that's yeah, that's just Torres, a natural I'm, instinct. Like I'm not saying he's not a good player, but like Torres, like uh, Torres scored like back to back at tricks. Yeah, that that is true. He has he has done one, that one against one against Middlesbrough, the other against. West Ham it was. Um, so I'm like, fucking can't teach that. No, <laughs> Six true. goals in two fucking games. Give me that fuck. You know? Yeah, that's fair. Again, I, I'd have no problem with that. Um, I, I, I suppose. I yeah, sorry, Ring. Go ahead. And like, I nominated him despite the fact it was his goal to put us out of the fucking um, quarterfinals mm. in the we, Champions we, League. Yeah. We've established that it's Torres versus Suarez. And they're both in the same boat. They didn't win a trophy, except for Suarez won the Carlin Cup. But. I think Torres gave us. Fuck it. This is actually the more I talk about it, the more they had done the fucking same thing. Mm. I have no idea. Um, it's between Torres and Suarez for me as well, and I think I'm just deciding both again, haven't I? Because yeah, I I I I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay my colours to Suarez. Just like take if I if I take all the like a lot of negativity, but if I take it all of it, if I peel all of it back and just focus on the football. He's unmarkable. He's unbeatable with the ball. Like he was just that year or two, those two or three years he was with Liverpool, there was just no stopping him. It was just the only person that could stop Luis Suarez was Luis Suarez. That's that's how bad it got. But isn't the thing about uh, Luis Suarez the reason why he played so well mm. was because he just wanted out of Liverpool. 
Yeah, there, there is that element to it. Absolutely. That, that was it. Like it, yeah, yeah. But it, go. came, yeah. like it came into the point where we were in from heavily. Yes. And the club were like, look, you're not going to a direct rival and nobody in Spain wants you. You were in Barcelona. there with the funniest transfer bid in human history. <laughs> yeah, in human history. So, like, and he wanted to leave. He wanted to go. Yeah. But they were like, no, Barcelona is... We're not, we're not going to sell you to another Premier League club. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but Barcelona or Real aren't in for you. So, tough shit. And then that's why he had that kind of turbocharged season. Because he was like, I'm going to play so fucking well that they'll have no chance. They'll have no option but to sell me off. Mm, yeah. Whereas um, with Torres, Torres didn't even want to leave. Yeah. Seeing Torres cry at Anfield was hilarious. Um, just going to put that in there. <laughs> That's true. Um, that is true, yeah. The thing is, Torres was my first season where I knew about, I knew the intricacies of football and he just had, 2008 oh nine. he was on fire. Jesus Christ, yeah. Isn't that was 08 oh, nine season. Unbeatable. Fuck. Wasn't Unbeatable. that the season he was slagging off the... Uh, he slagged off the Man U fans with the five to three slagging, because uh, Liverpool had five European titles at that time and Man U only had three. So you, you would think he was like running down the old the line at Old Trafford of all places with like five three in his hands, going ha 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 ha, you cunts. Um, yeah, that that, that, that did happen. That, that did happen. Yeah, I think the baggage the baggage kind of has to make like has to tell the difference and I, as I was saying it was my first season where like I was in football and Torres made all the vintage stands cry like five times over with that performance against United. <laughs> so I have to go with I have to go with have to go with Torres okay so Torres makes the call I'm, I'm okay with that I'm I'm, hap I'm absolutely happy to have that lineup because Jesus look at that that team is something fucking else Um, oh, that's a hell I of a team I, I, can, I, I can imagine there being so many arguments in that front three though because they'll cross over each other so many times. And just... <laughs> It'll be just Salah and Mane just saying, pass me the ball. No, pass me the ball. No. Ball? And then it'll be everybody turning around going, you've got Torres in the middle. Give the ball to fucking him. You <laughs> fucking idiots. Yeah. <laughs> and if it's not, if it's not that, that then, you've got Coutinho playmaking, Alonso playmaking, and Jared going, I ah, hear, fuck this, I'll just hit it from 30 yards. Or you've got Trent and Risa also saying that. And the two lads in the centre-backs going... That's great, isn't it? Football's football's class. Like, um, yeah. yeah, you've got Van Dijk and um, Pepe Reina at the back going. Do you fancy another cup of tea? Yeah. <laughs> Did you, you watch anything? Think it's good? bad us. Do you think it's bad us leaving the pitch to put the kettle on? <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, did you watch anything good on Netflix? Yeah, I checked out that uh, Russian doll show. Oh yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure about the characters. Like, uh, it's, yeah. uh, When's the second season of that Ozark thing starting again? That was deadly. Hang on, I'll, I'll look up on the phone there. I left the phone on the touchline and have a gander. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's Sammy's, one of the ball boys hand them it. I can imagine Sammy's mad into, Sammy Hippie is going to be mad into his uh, crime podcast, so he'll be listening to that on the fucking sideline while everyone else oh, just yeah. plays like mad. So, anyway, so that's the, that is the ultimate 11. The 11 is Reina, uh, back four of Van Dijk, Hippie, Risa, and Trent. Midfield three. Jesus, of Xabi Alonso, Steven Gerrard, and Philip Coutinho, and a front three of Salah, Mane, and Torres. Fucking beautiful. So, a little bit of how ground housekeeping to keep up then. Uh, we have to pick a head coach, lads. Um, might seem like a no contest, but we'll make pig iron of it anyway. Uh, over the generations, we've had a few managers uh, with like kind of long stints and very, very short stints, as we'll discuss. Um our Premier League uh, campaign started with Graeme Souness, who was then replaced by uh, all-round nice man Roy Evans. Um, then we Generation 2 was all Gerard Houllier. Um, very successful generation, it seems. And uh, Generation 3 then was Rafa Benitez, also fairly successful. Then Generation 4 happened. We had Roy Hodgson, Kenny Dalglish, and Brendan Rodgers. Um, full David Brent, Brendan Rodgers, no less. Uh, and then our current manager Jurgen Klopp uh, making up the class. So again, I, I don't see this as much of a contest, but I'm happy to hear what you guys think. Rafa, Rafa, interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jurgen gave me the fucking best night of my life. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Jurgen. Hmm. Decide and vote. I'll have to go for Jurgen. Um. 
Rafa's Rafa is tactically one of the best managers in the world, if not the best. Like the man can turn, he can turn like fucking shite into diamonds. That is his, that is what he does. Like look but at that's the, the like point. The, like yeah, that, that, that's, the, the that's the reason why I did it. His Liverpool team was considerably worse than mm. the one. Klopp has now. Granted, Klopp has he built, built it. that. He built that. He sorry, yeah, that, that, no, no. He had he had Ben Teke and fucking God knows how much crap. The the first season you knew he what he was doing. He told you he was getting rid of all the dead wood, and he did it. He didn't just say it like some managers do and don't do it. He went out and shoveled them all out and created a team from the ground up. Yeah, but Rafa would have actually won something with that team. Mm. He'd have done it. like there's like. Yeah, Rafa will actually give you like diamonds from coal, whereas you know Jurgen has to go and buy the diamond. And mm. you know that's it. It's the generation we were in. <sighs> Perhaps I was. You see, I was around for both of them, and like, like Rafa was was a again a, a, a incredible manager. Like he was able to get the best of the players, and he also had an incredible eye for talent. Like the players that we're purring over now are players that he bought. Reina. Alonso, Mascherano, Torres, and even the the secondary players he bought. Like we haven't even mentioned Arbeloa, who was there for two years. Uh, Fabio Aurelio, who was a such a, a a shame he never worked out, but the potential was there. Like he was the the replacement for Risa. It just never panned out. And um, Dirk Kite, who could how could we forget? Who just like he came in for pittance. He was like a million pound signing from Feyenoord, but he worked so hard, and that's what Rafa identified. He wanted hard workers and people who were tactically intelligent. But that being said, when you do look at the fact that Klopp has practically invented a style of football in his own image, that's not for nothing. Like people, like the, like the entire all the entire German league plays what what Klopp plays now. Like they all play high pressure, high fitness, high attacking. It's it is down now their nature when it when it wasn't back in the day. Like Klopp has has basically molded football in the same way that Guardiola has in Spain. Like as much as you can say for Rafa, Rafa never had that huge influence like Klopp has. So, in my opinion, that's why he gets the vote over Benitez. Because can you can you imagine like if Klopp is going full heavy metal football here with his team? Can you imagine how terrifying that is for a team? Whereas Rafa would be more pragmatic and he'd like he win cup he win like trophies, absolutely. But just imagine just pure exhibition football with his team and Jurgen Klopp. That's 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 what wins it for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly I I go with Jurgen. Because I Yeah, I, I it's it's obviously I, I was only there, there, like mentally, I was like six for like between four and six for like half a Rafa's reign. So, mm. um, I'll go with yeah, I'm gonna go with Jurgen. Okay, uh, it looks like Klopp is the winner there. Uh, uh, boom, indeed, boom. So, now we do have a, a subs bench for the players that we've missed and players that we love. So, I think that probably the first thing to do is perhaps go for like. We might pick a player that is that was like our fourth place choice in each section, and then three players for our, our own personal favorites. Let's well, say, do you, our cult do you want to do that? Do you want to do the actual proper subs bench rule, which is we need a sub keeper? Yes, no. I think uh, we should do if that. So, okay, fair. Because okay, if so, if if so, then like it's it's going to be Allison. Yeah. yeah, I think it is going to be yeah. Allison. Yeah. I want to give a special mention to um, Fabio Aurelio. <laughs> what? He oh. had, when he had a moment, he had a moment. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't do many of them. Chelsea and Chelsea and United free kicks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was it, that was his one and only skill. In fairness, was the free kick. He was just so goddamn good at it. Um, but again, it, it just the injuries just never really panned out. You know. Um, do you know what? I think this is a good place for Steve Finnan because it was it. it it was a very tough show between him and Trent. And I think, like, if we're not going to be able to put him in the first team, I think it's only fair to put him here, you know? So I think... Are, are we thinking with a manager's head, though? Whereas, like, Trent would never get injured. Why would we waste a pick on Finna? Perhaps. I think... I was thinking more so the fact that, like, for some aspects, like, it was a bit unfair on Finna not to make this team. But because Trent was there as well, 
we were kind of compelled to it. But uh, again, I'm happy to be shouted down otherwise. What do you think, um, Neil? No, no, I'll go with that. Yes, go yeah. with that. What is it? You want Finn, Finn on the Finn. bench, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll go with it. Okay, so we have Finn in. So that's I suppose that's our that's our defender uh, nailed on. So I guess we can pick a midfielder, and it would be I I go Milner, yeah. Milner, Sharano. We should pick two. Oh, no, not two of the same, but Mil Milner again. Him on Twitter this week was amazing. Plus he's a, <laughs> plus he's yeah. a tank of a player. Him nah, put, nah, if you want tank of a player. You can't get more than Mascherano. Just ask uh, Oxley Chamberlain. Yes, he was, he was put out for a year after attempting to tackle that man. But if James Milner cuts his grass with his daughter's <laughs> plastic scissors, he's gone in the team. In the in those bench. And Razor Ruddock doesn't make it in for breaking both of Andy Cole's legs. There's there's, just, there's plenty of space in the bench, Neil. All in da, good time. Da, da, I'm not all getting this. I'm just not getting. Just not. <laughs> Yeah. All right, then I'll, I'll, I'll hammer home the point. He used the same song that Alex Oxley Chamberlain and Perry Edwards used to their dance in a montage of him separating tea bags. His own tea bags, no less. Like actual yes. Milner tea, not Yorkshire tea. I just want to point out. Oh, yeah, because he's got his own brand of Yorkshire tea, doesn't he? Yes, he no, does, he yeah. Oh, does he? I thought no, he, he, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No, the tea company have it for him because... Um, because it was it because of the boring James Milner Twitter account starting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, we're in lockdown. It, it, we're in complete lockdown, by the way, lads. Yeah, yeah. They just announced it now. Two two weeks. Hey. Except for people, except for people in retail, which is me, and probably me as well. <laughs> I still I still have to work. Um, but yeah, that's great. Anyway. That means this podcast's going on forever, lads. So uh, better stretch this out a bit. Fuck. Uh, I want to play yeah. Mario Kart and Switch. <laughs> um, oh, but, yeah. yes Milner yeah I bought it today yeah I'll go with Milner yeah we, we still have place in, we have we still have space in the bench for uh, for our fan favorites but I think Milner dessert is warrants a space on this uh, bench so I guess we can kind of stick in a forward here so uh fucking Robbie Fowler is a good show what uh, Michael oh. Owen off the oh Michael Owen, Owen is oh. prime off the bench how oh yeah Oh. He would rip to shreds. Yeah, okay. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm talking like, uh, yeah, yeah, early period Owen, like, not mm. the Owen after you sold him off. <laughs> oh, yeah, or yeah. The Owen that's now a fantastic yeah. helicopter pilot in Qatar. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to the golf course. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen that video. Should I watch oh, it? Oh, please. You, you I'll need get to. it with your eyeballs. What was it? Michael Owen helicopter, is it? Grand. No, basically he's it's him. He's not actually in a helicopter. It's like he's on a really bad green screen, <laughs> uh, and it's terrible. It's he does like a virtual tour of uh, Dubai, and it's, it's just glorious. It's, it's glorious. So bad. Oh Jesus Christ! Like it, I think it is by <laughs> like we were having this conversation on the past podcast. It is, I think, the worst footballing footballer ad. Like. There's a few good ones. There's like this Wayne Rooney. There's like Steph Houghton, but Michael Owen is the winner there. It is the worst. Yeah, um, that is fair. So, so then we have space. Three more spaces on the bench, lads. So I think we should all pick a fan favorite, and uh, whatever makes the bench does. So Neil, uh, okay. A, a an ongoing theme of your uh, conversation has been Razor Ruddock. <laughs> Dare I say that is your fan favorite? No, no. Uh, I would, my, we're, we're not going to get Razor Ruddock teabag and fucking Mike Blown on the bench. <laughs> oh. Who um? Who did we have on the left wing or left midfield? It was Mane, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, my fan favorite was actually McManaman. Ah, okay. I am Steve happy McManaman. with that. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, very good. I think he was um, a fantastic player for his absolutely brilliant player. So really, really good. Oh, uh, will I go next, Ollie? Yes, please, Rain. What was okay. who would, of all the players that you have loved over the years? If you had to pick one to make this bench, this ultimate bench of of bench warmers, who would you pick? Them uh, like? Sure, rattle off some names that probably won't get in. Honorable mentions for the honorable mentions: Aquilani and Gog. Um, <laughs> fucking Aquilani, uh, Jesus! And Gog scored a scored a few amazing goals. Um, no, he, but, he scored a few goals. That was his problem. He scored again. He's, 
<laughs> I've never, I've never seen a goal in more top corner than his goal against Arsenal, Jonathan. I you never seen, I haven't seen any other goals outside of the one from Arsenal. That was his <laughs> fucking problem. Okay, um, I'm looking at the list up here because it's usually they're probably all up here. Um, I have, a, I have other players available if you want to scroll down. Yeah, I, I love. Oh, okay, this is tough. Um, do, do you have yours in your mind while I'm looking at this? I have a few options. I was kind of waiting to see what you'd say first and see if it's way. Actually, 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 it's a no-brainer. Divo Carigi. I swear <laughs> to God, that song, that song is the best thing in the world. And I swear, and I watched him score the goal in the Champions League final on someone's phone after the living room's TV went off with fucking glass and beer getting rained down on my head. Divo Carigi's going in the team. <laughs> yeah, I uh, for sentimental value, I think he might make the cut. Uh, because he was, because um, we had a not too a very similar experience. We went to uh, our local brewery. Shout out to Rascals. Um, they showed the Champions League final, and uh, okay, granted, it was a pretty shit final, but we had a lot of to- lot of fun slagging it off for how bad it was. Uh, and we were like, we were sat beside a, a group of Liverpool fans, and we had just been remarking about like, yeah, okay, this is a shit final, but Allison's saving our bacon here. Origi comes on and scores the winner. And I just said to him there, it's like, it's 2019, and I've just watched Diva Origi win us the Champions League final. And I genuinely can't believe I said that. Like, it just summarised how I, mental yeah. that was. Yeah. Um, I, my, my memories from that final, um, my mate put on a Liverpool accent to try and pull someone. Mm-hmm. That was hilarious. Um, in the living room. And afterwards, we were running down the street, and there was, like, flares going off outside the biggest tourist hotel in the world in ireland you know that one the one just on o'connell street whatever it's called it's got like a sleepy kind of name to it um i don't know what it's called well i went up to this bouncer and we kept going up to every bouncer being like who do you support and i finally found a real madrid fan and i got very in his face and got told to go away so <laughs> divok origi divok origi was the catalyst for all this so divok origi's gone on the bench that's great um i have a few i have a few possible shouts here um like, no word of a lie, one of my favourite players growing up was Emil Heskey. Super Heskey! Super Heskey! Because as a fat little shit growing up in Dublin, seeing another fat little shit playing so well for Liverpool just made my war- heart so warm. Um, so that was one thing. I also genuinely did love Peter Crouch because he looks so unnatural. Yeah. But he just he, he just seemed to just get... He had that what weird abnorm- abnormality to, to football where he was unmarkable. Um, the Man City, the goal against Man City for Stoke, where he was like back to goal and somehow turned his body around to volley one from about forty yards. Out. The one I remember is the overhead kick against Arsenal, yeah. where he scores four against them. And God, like he it's... did score a better overhead kick, though. He did. That, the that was the that's the, the baffling part. He scored better the... overhead kicks than that. The Bol- the Bolton one was the best overhead kick because you could see it came back off the net and came out with it. It came out of the net, didn't it? Yeah. Exactly, it, like, it went right, right in the bottom corner and came flying back out. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a player from the the recent crop would be uh, Ox. I am ge- oh, yeah. genuinely big fan of Oxley Chamberlain. Like I, I was bantering like when when it was looking very very likely we were signing him. I was bantering the <laughs> Neil and uh, and Burkbar for so long, saying, "Hey guys, uh, I'm really going to look forward to uh, when Ox- Oxley does this for us in a couple of months." And all I was getting was dogs of you going, "It's not happening! It's not fucking happening! Shut up!" And uh, lo and behold, here we are a couple of years later, and he's shuffling on a still not staircase. done it. it. He's not even done a war. Although what he has done is a Champions League victory, which you guys haven't. Anyway, um, <laughs> so <sighs> it's a tough choice, lads. Um, real tough Yossi choice. Yossi Benayoun. I'll put him. Put his name. You see, this is the thing. Like, see, I, there's a lot of players that I have in mind that are just so bad. I feel like I'd lose reputation if I mentioned them. But I think who I will go John for, John Joe Shelby. John Joe, yeah, Jesus, <laughs> fucking the base textbook definition of very flawed masterpiece. <laughs> like the idea of John Joe being that good is great, but it just never, never worked out. Um, then he decided to volley one from the halfway line into the net against Chelsea when we had like basically no players on the pitch. Everyone was like, "Oh, he's fucking class. He's the next answer to Gerard. Look at that from halfway." And yeah. it's like he's literally fucking dreadful. Yeah, he was dreadful. Uh, 
I'm going to go for Joe Allen. No <laughs> word of a lie. I, it's Joe Allen. He's playing in Stoke at the moment. He's in the he's fighting in the cha- in the championship relegation scrap. I genuinely do mean this. He is far too good to be in that league. Like he is, he deserves to be in a in a mid table Premier League team, working away, just pumping in the yards. Like he is, he's up there with between. Oh, actually, I might have talked myself out of this now. Uh, I actually might no. Do you know why? Because I just realised that the one player that I was talking about here is fucking Dirk Height. Dirk Height has yeah. like just put blood, sweat, and tears into every match he had with us, and I just. I feel that has to be acknowledged. Like he was never, he was never a technically gifted player, but he just yeah. played. He was just brilliant, and yeah, I, I think he makes the bench just just out of that, like just for the industry yeah. alone. Um, as much as as much as Peter Crouch wants to get rid of him, we'll put Sir <laughs> in there. <laughs> they are sworn enemies. They will battle forever, like the fucking chicken and Peter Griffin. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like again, Joe Allen is one of those players where he's. He, we we did. I don't really appreciate that the aspect of the game, but if you are playing with him, you're going. Oh, I'm so glad Joe's there. You know, is that kind of like weird Henderson effect we have right now, where he does all the little things so easy. Joe Allen just runs everywhere. He just puts in the shift, and it's just fantastic. Kurt Kite was the same way. So, so yeah, that is our team, we, lads. Uh, we have an app. We have woo! a substitute bench of Allison, Finnan, Milner, Owen, McManaman, Origi, and Kite. Fairly top heavy, I think it's fair to say, lads. But uh, I suppose we can have Miller playing centre back. He hasn't done that yet. Um, yeah. So that's not... it then. I, I don't think so. Actually, he might have done it once. Oh no, oh, no, he did. No, no, he had he had a good month where he's playing centre back or two weeks, I think it was. That or was, was that Lu- Lucas Leiva? That was Lucas Leiva. Wasn't it? I think it was Lucas. Yeah, he hasn't played centre back yeah. yet. Yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe in a couple of months when we've got the league sewn up, we can just have him in in, in goal and in centre back just to. Sign that off the bucket list, you know. So yeah, that that is a team and a half. That is a f- a absolute fantastic team. I will say, I'm really happy with that. Um, so yeah, that is our team. Um, we might put this up on uh, on our twitters, and we can uh, we can always argue to toss about this later on. But that is our team. Feel free to agree or disagree with us or not, and uh, see what your teams look like. I guess that would be a a good idea. So. Rian, thank you very much for joining us on the uh, Look at Football podcast. Uh, yeah, I believe, okay. thank you. I, I believe this is your time to plug all the shit that you have. Yes. Well, the one shit that I have, and the many things that are going on in that. Anyway, you can find me, me and my good friend Kieran um, on the Hallway Wrestling podcast. Um, we are a wrestling podcast putting out way too much content right now because we're bored. Um, me and Jonathan are probably going to record. Prepare the... to get more bored. Yeah. For the next two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Me and John... Actually, me, me, me and Jonathan, and next week are going to probably run a, record the best video I've ever done. Which, it, it, Jonathan, we're not going to reveal it. I probably, I might not. Actually, haven't. I've just said it's a good idea, but me and Jonathan will probably agree it's probably going to be a very interesting podcast to listen to. Um, it's going to yeah, take us not... some other rhythms. I'll tell you that much. It is, and it's going to be going to have a lot of nostalgia, and we have some, we have two very special guests um, as well. So we'll um, leave that to next week. Yes, um, you can find us on um, Hallway Graps Pod on Twitter, Hallway Wrestling Podcast on Spotify and SoundCloud. We used to do YouTube, but who the hell is ours? No one listens to podcasts on YouTube. Yeah, we're, we're the same. Um, we, we used to be on YouTube, and just nobody, nobody watches us anymore. So now um, you can find me on the Man of Genetics. Forgot. Um, I have a very bad twitter um full of videos of me crippling myself and self-deprecating so you can enjoy that <laughs> um, and jonathan abusing me as well jonathan and amy abusing me but, that is always uh, very you. very funny yeah yeah jonathan ha- thanks for having me on and no, uh, i'd love to come on yeah man absolutely yeah, pleasure have you on, man great to yeah. have you on thank you great stuff um I'm gonna, I'm gonna... as 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 for us we are going to uh do this again this time neil it's your turn we're going to be doing an arsenal <laughs> ultimate 11 and we'll see how many of the Invincibles make the cut. Uh, so well, we'll see only you. Only five can. Oh yes, exactly. That is the that is the fun part. You're gonna have to choose between your favorite players, and I can't Freddy wait. Freddie Youngberg. For... <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it's gonna be Freddie Youngberg all round, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I I am very much going to enjoy the Schadenfreude that that is going to bring. So uh, we'll see you next time when we do our Arsenal Ultimate Eleven next week. Uh, until then, lads, that was liquid football. Woo!